Hey there, everybody. Or should we say hello, Clarice? That's right. It only took us seven <laughs> seconds into the video to do this. You all knew it was coming. It is here. The Clarice pilot. Is it actually good? Like, we got a lot to talk about here. Yeah, we haven't done a video in this series, which is, is this pilot actually good? Where we take a look at pilots and see if we would watch another episode based solely on the pilot. This just felt like a really good sort of way to dive into this again, because we are both big sort of Hannibal, do we call it the Hannibal verse? Like, we're both fans of this property. Yeah, we loved Hannibal. It's one of the best shows I ever made. I really love Silence of the Lambs. I just like the source material a lot. I mean, it's very well known. So when we heard Clarice was coming up, I mean, there were some people out there that were really skeptical about it. I mean, it's on CBS. CBS loves procedural stuff. But we wanted to give it a fair shake. Yeah, and I'll admit, I was someone who had skepticism going into this, but I tried to go into it still with an open mind, and we will present our assessment of Clarice through one episode, which really is the most, like, knee-jerk thing ever, but, you know, we gotta know if the pilot is good, that's why we're here. That's right. And if you guys do enjoy this discussion into Clarice, subscribe to the channel. Clarice! <laughs> If your name is Clarice, or if it is not, still subscribe. We have a lot of fun stuff going on right now. It's a pretty busy week here at the channel. Yeah, it is. Okay, so I guess we should just answer the question to some degree. Now, did, did you actually enjoy the pilot of Clarice? I did. And I've seen a lot of reviews out there of people that are really just like burning the show to the ground and really didn't like it. But I think if you do go into this pilot knowing that this is CBS, it is a procedural type network, this is a procedural type show, you're not going to be disappointed by this because there were elements that still felt very much sort of in that Hannibal Lecter whole universe. The music was great. The cinematography was also really great. There was a little bit of it that sort of felt like a mix of Hannibal, a little mix of, mix of like X-Files and stuff like that was really good. It was still really gruesome, which is, you know, a big part of this whole universe. And I was wondering how much they would get away with. They got away with quite a bit. Yeah, they. it felt pretty adult. It felt more yeah. like... It did feel a little bit X-File-Z, X -File if I can even make that into yeah, a word. Yeah, we're both like tripping on that today. Yeah. X-Files is the word of the day that neither <laughs> of us can say. By the way, I have a lot of trouble saying Clarice, too, by the way. I always end up like almost dropping the A. But, <laughs> you know, this... I'm going to actually, I'm going to throw this comparison out there. That I think Clarice is the new Criminal Minds, where... You have a different case almost every different week. I don't I don't think it's got as strong of a supporting group of characters yet, but we're only one episode in, so... I'm yeah, I mean, that makes sense, too, for a pilot, because a lot of pilots that we've seen or talked about, it is really about the main character. There aren't a lot of shows that their pilot is about everybody, where, you know, like a Buffy. Buffy was really felt like an ensemble cast right away, and most shows are... We got Clarice, you guys know her, we already are all familiar with her, let's focus more on her. Because I agree, the supporting cast right now, they're kind of invisible. Yeah, it's like that part of the show right now isn't doing a lot for me, but I think the thing is, if we were sit to sit here and compare it to Hannibal, that's like super unfair, because that would be like any cable show that comes on like AMC comparing it to Mad Men, which is just like, there can only be so many Mad Men. There can only be so many Hannibals, but I think when you sort of put this up to the lens of a lot of other network crime dramas, it's got atmosphere, mm -hmm. it does have some pretty cool locations, yep. it, is, it is legitimately creepy, like I was pretty creeped out on a few different occasions watching it. Yeah, they they had that whole scene near the beginning where we had the first sort of case of the week where they were by that big storm drain. They had this gorgeous shot overhead and when they were pulling the body out again overhead and sort of floating down the river, like, this is a really pretty show. They've done a good job shooting it. I hope the rest of the show looks like this. And oh, it's yeah. not a, uh, we poured all of our money into making the pilot look good, but yeah. it does... It does look really, really nice. I think they, 
they could have done more in sort of establishing the period setting. Like, I don't really get that much in terms of the year when I watch it, but... Yeah, all we really know is that this is a year. <laughs> what year that is, we don't know. A year yeah. after everything happened with Buffalo Bill, so after everything of Silence of the Lambs. Which... By the way, here's where things get a little bit tricky, tricky with uh, Clarice, because I think there's there is a big Hannibal in the room here. <laughs> yeah. So this is, like I said, a year after Silence of the Lambs. So Hannibal is still in this universe. He has escaped. That's what happened in the movie. He's somewhere out in the world, I think in Florence, something like that. And it's, if I remember right in the source material, Clarice and Hannibal do meet up again, but it's like seven years later. So he's in the world, but he's not in her world. There's some complicated rights things that are going on here. So MGM has like some of the rights to the material and then you know, De Laurentiis Company has rights to other parts of the material. That's why yeah. on the Hannibal show, there was no mention of Clarice. Like they didn't have the rights to anything that was introduced in Silence of the Lambs. And then with Clarice, they don't have anything, they don't have the rights to anything that was introduced outside of Silence of the Lambs, so they can't mention Hannibal. He's always just going to be like the cannibal, the killer, like something kind of weird and mysterious like that. But they did have a little throwback in the show to that where she meets up with Ruth Martin, who is the mother of the girl that she saved in Silence of the Lambs. And the first thing she says is, hello, Clarice, which I thought was really nice. They As a throw throwback. It. I liked it. Yeah, they, they did. It made me smile. They did a good job throwing that in there. I, I think they also did a good job of sort of presenting Clarice as like, oh, this is the new hotshot agent that the press all wants to talk to. Because, we you know, we all see this when people get like super true crime <laughs> obsessed in the real world. You have like these superstar agents who find themselves like writing these like I don't know weird tell-all books about their lives and stuff. It was interesting though that she was still as popular that people still wanted to talk to her as much as they did because it seemed like after the case I mean it's a year later that there's you know news is so fast and it's just kind of moving along every day there's something new that it was a little bit surprising that they were still like, oh, wow, look, it's Clarice a year later. Let's find out. Like, it's kind of cold tea. You kind of see some other people on Team Clarice here. We're, we're too stoked about the idea of Clarice having all the airtime because we had you know, Paul Krindler, who is her new boss. Who also, Michael Cudlitz, he does not look like Abraham from The Walking Dead anymore, clearly. No, but I mean, I was... I will say this, I've been a little bit disappointed with the supporting cast, and it is the first episode, and like I said, they usually want to just focus on Clarice, but this is a character that we have seen so many times on TV, where it's like, you're the new hotshot kid, your boss hates you. Yeah, yeah, we've all seen this dynamic time and time again. Yeah, and I mean, just sort of... As soon as he sees her being like, you're just going to sit there and take it and we don't want to deal with you at all. It's like, well, what is, she, you know, like, come on. Well, just give us something new so that there is a new sort of dynamic in this. Well, I hear Paul has a purpose. He's actually getting Clarice to Washington so they can find a <laughs> cure for the virus. Yeah. No, okay. <laughs> Walking Dead humor. You're all welcome. But yeah, but Cal Penn is in this show. Yep. And unfortunately, that's all I can say about Cal Penn being in this show right now. Because I love Cal Penn. It felt like he had like 10 seconds of airtime. Yeah, not a lot of airtime there. And then we also had her roommate. And I mean, again, there just wasn't very much. I mean, a roommate for now. She's come there and she's like, hey, I'm moving in sort of thing. Here's all my ramen noodles. I have done the shopping. I was <laughs> like, okay. It, this feels like this could be a fun relationship, but not enough there yet. So the actress playing Clarice is named Rebecca Breeds, and I'll, I'll be honest, I did not know very much about her entering this show at all. Yeah, me neither, which is something that I was super excited about. I love it when a show has a huge property like Silence of the Lambs, and they put someone in that role that's not as well known as someone else that they could have put in that role. Yeah, I, I think this was a good cast. I think they probably spent a lot of time trying to figure out who the right Clarice was. Yeah. The fact that it's kind of a, I don't want to say a no-name actress. She's been in a couple of things, but someone who is lesser known, she kind of more morphs into the role. And 
I think she does a good job of at least anchoring us in, okay, this is who Clarice is, this is what she's struggling with, she's got a lot of pain, she's got a lot of trauma, but she still wants to do a good job. I think she was a really great cast. She did a great job with the accent, she did a great job telling me how much trauma she has had and how much weight she carries on her without actually saying anything, which is difficult for any actor but especially in a pilot, to be able to already convey a lot without saying anything, just purely with your face and your body and sort of how you're holding yourself. I really like her so far. She really brought this show together for me. What I did like about the case of the week story was mostly just that it was sort of set up with this construct of, oh, it's a serial killer on the loose. And that's even something Clarice is kind of pressured into even saying early on. But it turns out it's not exactly that, so at least they didn't just, like, dive headfirst in the, oh, Clarice is just going to take on crazy serial killer one right after the other for the rest of this series. I also liked that they kept the idea from Science of the Lambs that she's very observant. And we saw that at the first scene where she was sitting there with her therapist, and she was able to call him out on some of his nonsense by noticing the details. And that was something that I liked about her in Silence of the Lambs, something I like about her here. She's very sort of like Sherlock Holmes in that way, that he'll pick up little tiny details, and so does she, where she can see that the magazine tabloid was brand new, never been open, no creases, was not left by a patient was brought yeah. in to be a manipulation by her therapist like and i'm glad that they showed that like right away that this is the same character that you remember from the movies here's the thing i need more of and i don't know if they're going to give it to us or not but i do want there to be some sort of like big bad figure here i don't want every single episode to be okay here's just another disconnected case for clarice one right after the next after it's fine to have that but I want to be rewarded for watching every week. Like, I need just a little something, something a little more. Give us, like, later seasons Criminal Minds as opposed to the earlier ones. Yeah, what I'm hoping for, and it's only the pilot, so they yeah. can still deliver on this. <laughs> I'm hoping for one case that is sort of an overall arcing case for her that she will be working on while she's also working on a case of the week. And I think that they can do that with this show. They don't have to go into it thinking this is the next Criminal Minds or NCIS where it must be really procedural so they can do well in syndication. It doesn't have to be that. Let me ask you this, though, because I literally just thought of this. Does it hurt the show in a way that there is source material out there sort of suggesting, okay, this is what happens to Clarice down the road? Like, is this show going to be tethered to that where they sort of think, okay, we can't change the mythology if we're going to follow the source material so closely. Do you think they'll give themselves more freedom? I think they're going to have to, but I mean, realistically, I mean, we're still just at the pilot, right? Yeah. And like I said, it's, it's a year after, and from what I remember, she does not meet up with Hannibal again for seven years after the Buffalo Bill stuff. So there's six years in here. If this show lasts for six years, that's aces. Then they can start to kind of like move around with the material a little bit. I mean, Hannibal did too. If this show lasts six years, they just give give them the rights to Hannibal at that point. Like Exactly. Like, come on, we'll have made it a really long way. I do think, big picture, there's a lot of promise here. I think the pilot mm -hmm. does a lot of things really well. Yeah. It's cool to look at. Really well shot. Pretty good performances, especially from Rebecca Breeds. Need more supporting characters. I think need more depth overall. Yeah, and I'm very curious to see how things are going to play out more with Catherine Martin because that is the woman that she saved in the film. And a year later, she's kept in touch with all of sort of the families of the people who she didn't save, but she has not kept in touch with the Martin family at all. She has not returned any calls from Catherine. So when her mom, Ruth, calls her in, who she's now like an attorney general, I think she was a senator before or something like that, yeah. that it's she now has to have this conversation with Catherine. And it's a really dark conversation. I mean, Catherine has kept on to Precious, which was Buffalo Bill's dog. Like, <laughs> it is a really dark thing that is happening to Catherine. We're almost like she's resenting 
Clarice for being able to go on with her life where Catherine's kind of like, I am unable to go on with my life. And I, if I am unable, you are unable. And I am going to sort of make sure that we're, we are one in the same and we are together. And there was that like underlying theme of Clarice, you don't have anyone. Cause even Ruth said that too. Oh, everybody hates you. You know, like you don't have anyone. Worry your people. And I was like, Whoa, that's really sad. This is a show that's got a lot of dark stuff in it. I think there's a lot of pain with Clarice. I think we're going to see that sort of layer itself into the show over time. Mm -hmm. I do feel like this pilot is actually good. I'm not going to go so far as to say, you know, this is like the, one of the top five pilots I've seen over the past few years. But it's, Nothing can be lost. Nothing can be lost. Nothing can, you know, it's not Hannibal, but it's very good. It's got a lot of things going for it. It's worth checking out the next episode, which I'm yeah. going to do. I'm excited to see where it goes. Yeah, this was a very good first go at this. Yeah, there are some problems. It does need to pick up its supporting cast and give them, flesh them out a little bit more. I'm hoping that Clarice's new boss, that they're going to kind of get rid of this trope of being like the boss that hates you and move into something else. It shouldn't have to be. She needs to prove herself so he won't hate her anymore. Like we've been on that road yes. before and this is a very special source material. It doesn't have to be this way. And I think, I think they'll find their footing as it goes on. I really hope that they will. Well, let's just hope a lot of people out there check out the show. And if you guys have, what did you think about the pilot? Does it make you want to keep watching? Do you want to say hello, Clarice, on a weekly basis? And are you going to watch the next episode? I mean, we will. Let us know. And if you guys like this video, subscribe. Give us a like. Support us further. We have links in the description to the store as well as our Patreon if you're interested in that. And we'll see you here next time. Goodbye, Clarice. <laughs>